10. T-26 Tank In the late 90s, an operation took place to recover three T-26 Russian tanks that sank near the Finnish island of Petar Sari. In 1998, the salvage mission was a success, as one was brought up from its watery resting place. The T-26 was one of the most popular Soviet tanks in operation during World War II. They were manufactured in the 1930s, and thanks to their simple but compact design, the T-26 was the Swiss army knife of Russian tanks. It had over 52 variations made for it, with different weapons and attachments like flamethrowers and guns. They even converted into armored carriers. So, how did three of them end up underwater in Finland? These tanks in particular were part of the 394th Tank Battalion in the 72nd Rifle Division of the Soviet Army. During the conflict that raged in the early part of March 1940, the tanks were attacked, and as a result of the damage, three in the battalion were sunk. After being recovered, the T-26 now has its home in the WW Parc La Wonsu Museum located in France. 9. The Tulsa American In 1945, after a hard-fought battle, the Tulsa American was on its final trip back to the US, when it was intercepted by German fighter planes over the waters of the Mediterranean Sea. With its engine taking heavy damage, the B-24 bomber made a crash landing in the water. Seven of its ten strong crew survived. The others would remain missing for 73 long years. The plane was originally built in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and people never gave up hope that one day the plane would be found. It was affectionately considered to be Oklahoma's Amelia Earhart. In 2017, near the coast of Croatia, an underwater archaeologist named Matej Parika and his team began surveying the ocean floor after receiving information that Tulsa American was spotted there in 2010. By the looks of the wreckage they found, it was definitely not a smooth landing for the plane. Brendan Foley, another archaeologist working on the project, noted how the nose of the Tulsa American looked like a peeled banana. Just imagine how hard it had to have hit the water for the metal to bend like that. Despite the damage to the front of the plane, most of the hull was still intact, including some of the passenger seats. The team also found some remains of the site, which they're hoping belonged to the missing three airmen, so they can finally bring the soldiers home to Tulsa after seven decades spent below the waves. 8. Ferry Swordfish As technology continues to advance, we're able to uncover secrets we once thought were long lost and impossible to recover in our oceans. Underwater drones can reach depths and places normal divers could never dream of, and they've been especially helpful with finding the lost planes of World War II. In 2018, Chris Clark made a discovery using an underwater drone. He was searching waters around the island nation of Malta when his drone picked up on something lying on the seabed. In an amazing discovery, he found the sunken wreck of a fairy swordfish, a bi-wing aircraft once used by the British Navy. It's the second plane of this kind to be found in the waters around Malta. Archaeologists also uncovered the remains of a different swordfish just a year before in 2017. The 2017 discovery is believed to be the wreckage of a plane that made a crash landing in 1943 after experiencing engine failure. Thankfully for the crew, two British servicemen were sailing near the crash site and transported them to safety. At this moment in time, there are no plans to bring the planes out of the water. Instead, they will remain an interesting spot for divers in the years to come. 7. USS Grunion Lieutenant Commander Manat El Abel was captain of the USS Grunion, a Gato-class US submarine. He and his crew performed many heroic and notable feats in 1942. Despite the sub being newly built, it had only been commissioned in April that year. Among the noteworthy deeds the Grunion accomplished was saving 16 crew members who were on board the USAT Jack, a transport ship that had been struck by an enemy torpedo. In June, the submarine managed to sink two Japanese patrol boats in the icy waters of Alaska. Captain Abel and the Grunion were then ordered back to base in Dutch Harbor, Alaska at the end of July. But the submarine never finished that trip and was considered lost in October that year. Lieutenant Commander Abel left behind two extremely determined sons who did all they could to find out what happened to their father. They continued to search until finally they got the help of Tim Taylor, 
who used a series of autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, to scour over the seas of Alaska. Finally, after 77 long years, the brothers got a bit of closure. 2,700 feet, 822 meters under the waters surrounding the Aleutian Islands, the AUVs picked up images of the USS Grunion's bow. But sadly, the rest of the sub's location is still a mystery. What do you think happened to the USS Grunion? Let us know in the comments below. 6. USS Samuel B. Roberts The battle of late in October 1944 between US and Japanese forces was deadly. Four U.S. ships, the USS Gambier Bay, the USS Johnston, the USS Hull, and the USS Samuel B. Roberts all sank after taking damage from heavy attacks made by the enemy Navy and Air Force. 89 soldiers out of the 224-man crew from the USS Samuel B. Roberts were reported dead, some due to wounds suffered during the battle. But others were attacked by sharks prowling the waters while the terrified men awaited rescue. As for the ship itself, it sank deeper than any diver could reach, ending up 23,000 feet, 7,000 meters underwater off the coast of the Philippines. Since it met its final resting place, the vessel has been coated with coral and other sea life that now calls it home. It was discovered by Caladan Oceanic, who uses special technology to find sunken pieces of history. It's clear they're used to looking for things in super deep water. They've also found the USS Johnston, which was at a depth of 21,000 feet, 6,400 meters. At the moment, we know the locations of three out of the four ships. Unfortunately, researchers don't have enough reliable information to find the last one, the USS Howell. What do you think happened to it? Since the Samuel B. Roberts was only found recently, we're holding out hope that the Howell will turn up soon and all four ships will finally be accounted for after 78 years. 5. Saipan's Maritime Heritage Trail Although some World War II wrecks lie deep beneath the waves, there are some easily accessible wreckage sites that let people get up close and personal to fragments of military history. The Battle of Saipan took place in June and July of 1944 in the Mariana Islands. During this time, many planes, tanks, ships, and other vehicles found themselves submerged under the lagoons of Saipan as forces battled for control of the islands. Thankfully, the lagoons are pretty shallow, so instead of diving deep underwater, some of the finds are just knee-deep and 35 feet 10.6 meters deep at most. This means that as long as you don't mind going for a swim, you can head out and see the rusting, barnacle-covered war machines for yourself. Doesn't this sound interesting? The Saipan Maritime Heritage Trail was set up in 2009 by a team of archaeologists with the help of the local government. Not only does it help keep the history of this battle alive, but it also helps support the local economy too. There are 12 different spots marked out on the trail, and some notable finds include a Japanese IG E-13A Jake float plane, US M4 Sherman medium tanks, and a Japanese Kawanishi H-8K Emily flying boat and much more. The tropical lagoons are also filled with marine life, creating a colorful contrast against the stark iron and steel. You can often see small fish darting between the wrecks or hiding inside them. 4. The Lost Subs When you see wrecks of military vehicles, it can be easy to forget how people probably lost their lives when these vessels went down. For many family members of fallen soldiers, there are countless unanswered questions about where their loved ones died or how it even happened. Imagine losing the most important person in your life and not knowing anything. It's the sad reality for many service members' families. Helen Cashel Baldwin was just eight years old when her father, Frederick Edward Cashel, died on the R-12 submarine alongside 41 crewmates during a training exercise in 1943. She grew up never really knowing what happened to her dad, especially since there was no body and no funeral for him. 68 long years later in 2011, Helen learned the submarine her father had been on was found by an ocean explorer named Tim Taylor. She and her siblings set out with Tim on a boat 11 miles, 17.7 kilometers out from Key West, where he showed them underwater drone images of the wreckage below them. Finally, Helen and her family were able to pay respects to Frederick by dropping white roses into the waves. 
The discovery of this R-12 submarine is one of the many that Tim Taylor's found while being part of the LOS-52 project, which aims to find lost and sunken US vessels in order to bring closure to families of those who gave their lives in service. They found seven other submarines and figured out the final resting place for over 288 service members. 3. The Giantina The Giantina was built in La Spezia, Italy in 1932. This Argonauta-class submarine was 201 feet 61.5 meters long, 18 feet 5.65 meters wide, and had a diving displacement weight of 810 tons, 734,819 kilograms. It could reach speeds of 14 knots, 16 miles per hour while sailing, and 8, 9.2 miles per hour when it was diving, where it could travel 262 feet, 80 meters under the sea. It wasn't lacking in firepower either. The Jantina had not only four torpedo tubes, but also a 35 naval gun. It was clearly a force to be reckoned with, so what happened to it? The Jantina had been operating for nine years by the time July 1941 rolled around. It was sailing above the water around the Greek islands of Mykonos after leaving the Italian naval base on Leros. There was a reason the Jantina traveled on the surface of the water and not underneath it. Technical problems left the submarine unable to dive and pretty much a sitting duck. The Jantina was soon spotted by British submarine HMS Torbay, which launched six torpedoes at the Italian vessel. By the time the crew realized what was coming towards them, it was already too late. Two of the torpedoes missed, but the rest were direct hits. Out of the Jantina's 48-man crew, only six survived the attack. It would take 80 years for the Jantina to be recovered in 2021. The team that found it used underwater vehicles to capture images of what the submarine looks like now. You can still see the gun turret on top and all of the ventilation holes on its side near the deck. She seems to be in pretty good shape considering, but her new crew is a whole host of colorful sea life. Two. The Virginia A US oil tanker called the Virginia was patiently waiting at the mouth of the Mississippi River after sailing through the Gulf of Mexico. It was transporting fuel to the nearby city of New Orleans, but they never received a delivery. A German submarine patrolling the area spotted the Virginia and fired three torpedoes at it. Thanks to the dangerous nature of its cargo, the ship was quickly engulfed in flames. Eventually, the tanker sank taking the lives of 27 crew members in the process. The Virginia would remain lost until 2001, when oil and gas engineers were able to track it down by accident while using sonar technology to find new dig sites. But its history isn't what's making scientists excited about the discovery. The Virginia's new job isn't to transport fuel. Instead, it's helping us understand more about underwater mudslides. It doesn't have to do much in its new role, it just has to get carried along by mud deposits pushed out from the Mississippi River. Scientists can then track its position and other data in order to better understand the mudslides, helping them protect oil and gas pipelines that could end up being damaged by the natural phenomenon. Sounds like a pretty easy job for an old lady like the Virginia, if you ask us. 1. An Enigma Machine Have you ever been swimming or diving somewhere and spotted something crazy? That's exactly what happened to a group of divers clearing old fishing nets in the Baltic Sea last year in January 2021. The divers were collecting plastic nets when they noticed something that looked like a typewriter sitting in the sand of the seabed below. Many people would have simply passed over the item, but Florian Huber, an underwater archaeologist on the scene, thankfully realized the importance of what had been uncovered. The typewriter was not a typewriter at all. It was much rarer than that the divers had actually found an Enigma machine. Enigma machines were used during World War II in order to encrypt messages so they couldn't be understood by enemy spies. The UK in particular had many teams dedicated to deciphering these codes, such as Bletchley Park, where the famous Alan Turing worked alongside many others to decipher the Enigma code. The efforts of Turing and the rest of these cryptographers helped intercept many messages and commands by German forces and ultimately allowed them to save countless lives. But why did the Enigma machine end up in the Baltic? It's believed that towards the end of the war, 
it was on a German ship that was purposefully sunk to stop it from falling into enemy hands. Experts are currently trying to restore the Enigma machine to working order, allowing more insight into the mysteries and complexities of World War II. Thanks for watching. Which of these discoveries from World War II surprised you the most? Tell us about it in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye.